Okay, picking up where we left off in the last video, we've launched the browser. It's running in the Visual Studio web server. Um, setup completed, and we can now sign into the site as admin at admin.com and the password admin. And of course, on a real site, you could change your password right away. Um, now, we don't need to debug all the time. We can actually. Uh, stop debugging by hitting the stop button. Now that it's all compiled, you can actually uh, run it in the browser without running the debugger. The debugger is very helpful when you want to set a breakpoint um, and you know see what the code is doing. You see all these whited out folders from our post build event, our feature files. And they just they don't have code behind files. That's all compiled into the DLLs. Um, So if you wanted to run it in the browser again, you could go down to default.aspx and just say uh, view in browser. And you can launch it'll launch the Visual Studio web server again, but much quicker than debugging. So you can you know run the site without the debugger. The debugger's a tool that you use when you're trying to understand a problem that it's not behaving as you want it to. Um, so talking about the source code, why work with the solution. You know, a lot of people download our pre-compiled deployment files and they open it up in Visual Studio as a website. And that can work, uh, but really, as you can see, our projects are not. We have a .cs proj file. We're, these are web application. This is a web application project. It's quite different than a Visual Studio website. A website project doesn't have a project file. It just assumes that every file is part of the project if it lives in the folder. Now in our case, we don't want it that way because, you know, the event calendar is a separate feature. It's not part of the core, but we copy it up there and we can debug it at runtime, in fact. You know, even though we never run these other, like, this features UI is a web application project as well as is web store UI. We never run those directly. We, we can set breakpoints in that code, but we're always launching it from mojoportal.web. Now, I think I noticed an extra web server spawned up when we debugged. Um, and you may find that happening as you add your own web UI projects and when you launch the debugger, uh, Visual Studio is going to fire up a Visual Studio web server for each web app project in your solution. And it's not always what you want. Uh, for a long time I didn't know how to solve that. It turns out to be very easy. It's, it's kind of strange because when you have a right click here and you go to properties, right, you don't find it there. But there's another thing, if you just click it and choose properties over here, um, then you see this little properties window, always start debugging, and it's whether to start a local web server when it's not the startup project. And we want to set that to false, that way we don't ever launch an extra one for this web store UI project. And the same on the features, we just go ahead and set that to false. And now, whenever we debug, it's just going to launch this one web project. And that's really what you want. That's the only one we're ever going to debug from, because these projects are not designed to run independently. They are designed to run as part of Mojo Portal Web. And as I've said before, the post-build event copies the files up there. Now, we can look quickly at the post-build event to understand that. You right-click to choose properties this time, and you go to build events. And then you can see this post build event here. It's just a bunch of copying of files. You know, we get the, the DLL, we get our our business and data layer DLL, and then we copy our you know ASPX, ASHX, ASCX kind of control and page files. We copy our app global resources, and we copy our setup folder. And we'll talk about the setup system in a later video and how you can integrate that into your own projects. Um, so this is the magic that makes it possible so that we can develop features that depend on Mojo Portal, but Mojo Portal doesn't depend on those features. You, know, you can't have like a circular uh, dependency. So we don't want Mojo Portal to be dependent on the blog or any of the features in here. We want them to depend on Mojo Portal. And so by post build events, we move the files where they need to go and they can run at runtime. And the same thing when we go to deploy, as we'll see in a later video, we don't deploy all of that. We just point at the web project because everything's already copied there by the build event. Um, let me check our clock. I want to make sure I don't go over 10 minutes. Okay, four and a half minutes. Um, so basically, uh, we'll talk about that in, an, in another video. But 
we would do change this to release build. We would rebuild the whole solution, and then we would point unleash it at the web folder. And by the web folder, I mean literally the web folder. That's the Mojo Portal web thing. You can see all the files get copied here from those other projects. They're not under source control in this folder, so they don't have the little you know SVN icons. Um, but so basically when we deploy, we point unleash it at this folder, and unleash it deploys files to another folder based on file extensions, and it can leave out all the C sharp code and all that stuff and just get the DLLs and the .ascx, .aspx, all the you know web.config, all the needed files, images, JavaScript, and leave out the C sharp source code. And then once that package is, is copied, you know, by unleashing into another folder, um, there's only just a little bit you need to do, like the web.config, you want to change compilation debug to false. And if you've been developing a bunch of uh, content on your test machine, you know, sometimes the images and stuff that will get stored in the data will uh, get deployed, and you may not want to deploy that to production if you're just trying to produce the software package itself. Okay, now, so why I work with the source code is the other big thing I wanted to talk about is because when you're going to build your custom features, you're going to, you know, let, uh, unless you're just a very experienced developer, you're going to find it's very helpful to look at other features to see how things are done. If you want to know how to send an email, you can look at the contact form. If you want to know how to upload a file, you can look at the shared files feature or the image gallery. You know, there's just lots of great example code for almost any task. You know, if you want to connect to the database, pretty much most of the features do that. So there's a, it's, it's a learning tool. What you don't want to do is just start hacking around making changes in the Mojo portal code. <clears throat> we'll talk about this more in another video when I show you how to set up your own projects for custom development. But any custom stuff you make, you want to keep that in your own projects and you don't want to modify Mojo portal code. Because if you do that, you're creating a fork, and what happens is you will have a hard time upgrading later without losing your customizations. And Mojo Portal is evolving quickly. You can be sure there will be some new feature you will want, or there will be some security problem fixed, and you will need that. So you always want to be able to upgrade. Um, <clears throat> now, you know, if you find something that you just can't do without getting a change in the Mojo Portal, there are ways you could, you know, some people need a like a really custom login or registration page. You could put that in a, pro, in a custom project and you could overwrite an existing file like the login page or the register page with your custom version and that would be a little, a little bit better because you can still upgrade, you just have to restore your customizations. Um, if you find something that you really think, oh boy, if, if this was only had this little thing in Mojo Portal Core, it would make my job of building my feature so much easier, then you can talk to us about that, you know, in the forums and suggest a change that you'd like to have integrated into Mojo Portal. Let's see, we're hitting eight minutes now. I'm going to end this clip here because I'm trying to make sure we come in under 10 minutes for each clip so that they can all go up on YouTube. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next clip.